Do you have anything for crimps? Uh, yeah. Let's do... Yeah, we're gonna, um, do some stuff. Here's from the keeper, right? Thanks! I just, just woke up like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> so, like, I'm not mad a little bit. But, um, I appreciate you. Um, let's see. We're going to start, as always, with a nice seated meditation, just a grounding meditation, then move into some movements, and we'll end with a nice long shavasana, final relaxation pose. Everything that I lead you through is an invitation, uh, so don't feel hung up on it having to look any certain type of way. I'm more committed to it feeling good in your body. Pause this. Perfect morning life event. <laughs> All right. It's time to find a comfortable seat. I like sitting cross-legged on the floor. It's called Sukhasana. Uh, easy sitting pose. But um, if you end up sitting in a chair, that's great too. Heart comes over hips. Head over heart. Hands come to rest on the lap, either palms down to ground down or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you've got a little extra to give today. Eyes can close if that's comfortable. If not a soft gaze, just beyond your legs works great. We'll start with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, shoulders rise up towards the ears and an audible sigh out through the mouth, shoulders drop away. Return to a natural breath pace, in and out through the nose if that's available. We'll just take a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. Become present to yourself here in this moment. Here in this space. Allowing sounds into your awareness. The sound of a plane flying overhead. Maybe birds singing outside the window. And perhaps the sounds inside your home, any humming of the lights, or shuffling of a pet or roommate. Allowing all sounds in all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. Feel the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. And checking in for any places of tightness or sensitivity. 
any restlessness or fidgeting. Just taking note to work into these places that call out for your attention throughout your movement practice here today. I'm shifting this attention from the body, Anamaya Kosha, to the breath, Pranamaya Kosha, and energy levels. Notice where you're at in this moment on a scale of one to 10. One being exhausted, fatigued, ready for bed. 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. And turn the attention to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, and whatever space in between. And turning the attention to Manomaya Kosha, the mind. Allow thoughts and feelings to freely arise, but no need to engage. Observe them from a distance, like clouds passing in the sky. Notice what are the quality of the thoughts today? Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they reminiscing, ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not good or bad, not right or wrong, just something to notice. And we'll bring the attention back down to the breath. This time actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale lets something more go. Inhales. Fill belly like a balloon being inflated. The belly expands outwards on the inhale. Exhaling pulls belly button in towards spine, deflating belly with the exhale. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. As that preps the air to be warmer and more humid for the lungs to more readily accept. 
full belly breathing, drops the diaphragm out of the way, go to the lungs to more fully fill. We're seated up tall in the spine like there's a string attached to the crown of your head pulling you skyward. And we'll layer on our pranayam, our breathing exercise for this month. It's called Ujjayi Pranayam, victorious breath. And it's commonly known as ocean sounding breath. And we'll achieve that by bringing a slight constriction to the throat. Just enough so that you can hear your inhalations and exhalations as they pass through. It's almost the feeling like you're trying to fog up a mirror or blow out birthday candles, but through your nose. Keep the face relaxed, keep the breath slow and long. Space between top and bottom teeth, the jaw hangs heavy, the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. Plenty of space between the eyebrows. Let the mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. And on your next exhale, releasing any constriction from the throat, any effort from the breath, returning to a natural pace. Perhaps your breath is affected by that pranayam, by that breathing exercise. Ujjayi pranayam can help us build this relationship with the breath so that we can help uh, use it or more easily use it or work with it as a tool off the mat. We need to calm down, calm any nerves, also warm up the body as it helps build some internal heat. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms press together in Anjali Mudra, no space between the fingers and the thumbs press into the sternum. Consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. Whatever first comes to mind, whatever your reason for showing up to your mat today is, the invitation is just to set it in the positive and the affirmative. Positive and the present, there we go, the positive and the present tense. For example, it might sound something like, I flow through life with ease and grace.
And we'll seal that intention with the sound of Om. You're, of course, welcome to join me in chanting. First, a cleansing breath. <sighs> oh. Allow your hands to release down to your lap, chin drops towards chest, and then inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest, and left ear towards left shoulder. Just allow your head to gently roll side to side like that. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for the hearts. And on Facebook, good morning, Good morning, Miss Nick. I wish I could do yoga maybe one day. I just had lower back surgery. Okay, definitely take your time and listen to what your doctor says, but of course, you're always welcome here. Um, even just for the meditation parts, uh, I guess if you had lower back surgery, um, I don't know if they have you sitting or laying down, but definitely possible to um, modify to make it work for you. We have a bunch of people who just do uh, the, ch the stuff that's available in chairs, like the upper body stretches. Um, but it's great to see you. Good morning, Sancho Bermuda. Hello, friends on Twitch. How are you today? How are you feeling? Head back up through center. Let's just begin to roll the shoulders forward, opening up the space between the shoulder blades and the upper back. the shoulders back, opening up the chest, all space between the collarbones. Nice, doing good, resting, sounds good, sounds good for a Monday. Was your weekend very uh, full of activity? Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And then exhale here, just kind of relax the shoulders away. And your next inhale, right arm drops down, left arm reaches over. So we're inhaling here, we're pressing into these side ribs, gluing this left hip down to the ground. Let's really open up the intercostal muscles and exhale up through center. I balance resting and getting things done. That sounds so healthy, Center Bermuda. That sounds like the ideal way of doing things, doesn't it? Exhale through center. Inhaling to the sides. We're just alternating sides, beginning to calibrate with the breath. So the speed of the body, uh, getting in tune with the length of the breath. Greg, I balance chasing a toddler and getting things done. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds like the season of life you're in for sure. All right, besides ghost flu, who's in immaculate mental and emotional order in his life, we've got Sancho Bermuda, who's actually figuring out work-life balance. Got a really, really healthy chat over here. All right, we've got one more to each side. Really inhaling in these lateral bends to open up that space between the ribs. We're opening up new areas of mobility to breathe into later, right? All right, next time we're up here, we'll take a deep breath in and center, reaching through the fingertips. And exhale, twist it over to the right. Left hand lands on right knee, right hand lands on the ground behind you, we're just twisting the chest open to the side wall. Inhale up through center, undoing the twist and exhale to the left. So it's not the deepest twist of your life, 
We're just waking the body up to this movement, following the breath into center and out to twist. Greg, I'm, I miss the calm and envy you such a Bermuda. I think lots of people, even without a toddler, have a hard time balancing rest and getting things done. I do. It's like my job as a yoga teacher. <laughs> So I think that that is an accomplishment in itself. I guess an accomplishment is like, that's like a really specific definition in our culture. Um, but I think that that's the best word I could find to describe that. All right, next time we're here up in center, let's just bend the elbows and hands come to ear height or wave out the hands, just beginning to warm up the hands, the wrists, all the ligaments, muscles, and tendons in between. Palms flip down, fingers wiggle side to side. So I'm going to the edges of my mobility, edges of my range of motion here. Elbows aren't moving, just, just the hands. I'm doing all that small, repetitive, um, fine motor skills, fine motor movement that we do all day, texting and typing and video game playing. Like, if you're playing osu, like my husband plays osu, like I'd be like undoing some of that, like tapping. Palms flip up to the skies, fingers are reaching back, fingers spread wide. It's like you're trying to get your fingernails to touch your forearm and we're rotating here. So this takes some forearm strength. If you feel any like grinding or clicking in the wrist, that is, I mean, pretty normal. It's not gonna say it's good, I'm not gonna say it's bad but we're just noticing. It's not about labeling like, oh, this wrist is better than that or anything like that. No, we're just observing without judgment. Oh, I've never heard of the game of Osu. Oh, so it's a rhythm game, like uh, like Dance Dance Revolution. You know, where you step on the arrows, but instead it's with a cursor. No, the cursor, but with a tablet. So you like tap and then like press buttons, it's like music. All right, let's shake hands out. It's just like really repetitive and insane. It's like entertaining. If you like music, then like it's entertaining. I can't make it through 10 seconds of that game, but a couple friends were like in a tournament and all I could think was, wow, you guys should really come to my yoga class to stretch out your wrists later. <laughs> Three, two, one, all right. Um, yeah, let's do our neck mobility first, and then we're gonna get to some uh, like lower belly type, type stuff. It's a fat, it's a super fast mouse rhythmic, mouse tapping like Guitar Hero with your mouse. Yeah, people get really, really good at it. Thank you, Greg. It's a good way of explaining it. All right, so I'm just turning to the side so that if you haven't done this before, you have an idea of like what it looks like, but you can stay facing your screen if that's easier for you, or I think it will be easier for you. So you're just seat, sit it up, seated up tall, shoulders over hips, and then just the head and neck are gonna move, chin tucks in towards chest. And it's like I'm making a circle with my nose, is reaching down, all the way forward, all the way up and back. And then it tucks back in towards my chest. So I'm gonna smooth this movement out, try to get to the very edges of my range of motion. Try to rhythm. Hello, the lurking. Good morning. I might not be morning by you, but it's morning by me, so. So we're trying to keep this movement smooth and slow and intentional. And the breath continues to be deep and controlled. Just opening up new areas, new patterns of movement in the cervical spine, in the neck. And then we're gonna change directions. So we're leading with the nose, now we're gonna go up, up, up with the chin, forward, down, Tuck it in and then turn it back.
And bring it back to center. All right, let's just like shake, not shake it up, kind of look over side to side, drop the neck side to side, or ear side to side. Okay, legs come out in front. <clears throat> let's give the legs a little space. Spread and scrunch the toes, <clears throat> point and flex the feet. So a couple of people have reached out to me and are just like, I, the hardest part of class for me is sitting during the meditation, like during the beginning um, meditation and um, part of class where we're just rolling out the ankles, just picking up my lower legs here um, and feet. And I'm like, oh yeah, like that took years, like sitting cross-legged for 15 minutes straight or like 20 minutes straight, that really took years to work up to. And I guess that's not something I've talked about that much. So you can change direction of the ankle rolls. Um, so if you're, uh, so one way of kind of interrupting that, so like once you get to your your limit, you're like, my legs are falling asleep, you can change the, the orientation of the feet. So like right leg's in front, bring left leg in front, and just do like a little shake in between. That's what I used to do. Um, let's see, feet bend, or rather knees bend, feet come flat onto the ground, we're just gonna let the hips wake up here. Um, or if you need to change positions and like sit with your legs, extend, one leg extended out, um, what you can do to kind of build up your endurance for uh, sitting that long with your like spine nice and tall is that you know that the beginning of class every day is the same. So you know, the meditation, or I'm telling you, maybe you don't know, the meditation, we go through the same parts. Maybe the words I say are different, but we're still always going through Anamaya Kosha, body, Pranamaya Kosha, breath and energy, Anamaya Kosha, mind and thoughts, and then bringing it down to a Kaniya, which is our breathing exercise that we chant home with our intention setting. So you know that there's like five parts there. So you can see how far you can get before your legs get tired and need to um, need to extend or move. So next time the knees fall over to the right, just make sure this knee's far enough back. Next time this, uh, make sure this leg is far enough back that the it doesn't land on top of the knee. We'll land the right hand close to the right hip. And the left arm reaches up. We're going to sweep up, lift the hips uh, and the chest. You need to open up the hips and the belly. Exhale, hips touch down, hand touches down, knees drop over to the left. Right arm sweeps up, lifting the body with hips. Back. Instead of thinking about the back bend, think of it as a front body opening. Okay, hips touch down and turn over. So don't worry about arching your spine or anything like that. Instead, think of sending the hips and the chest up towards the sky. Hips and chest rise. I'm pressing my hips forward. Okay. So we're really focusing on opening up the uh, space in the abdomen and the hips. And that definitely helps alleviate cramps or even if you like ate, if you have eaten too much food and you're trying to get like all that digestive energy moving in uh, in yoga, it's called Agni, digestive fire. Build some of that today. And it's gonna help alleviate alleviate any pain too, or help alleviate pain. So next time the knees fall over to the right, we'll bring our hands to frame the right knee. And I'm just light on fingertips so I can stay seated up nice and tall. We'll take a deep breath in uh, and pull the shoulders back. So it's like a proud pigeon pose. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades back behind me, popping my chest up and out. Exhale, I wave forward. Belly, chest, head. I'm not reaching my belly, chest, head to the ground. I'm reaching them towards the wall in front of me, but because my hips are attached to the ground, they lower like a wave. Inhaling rolls you up. One vertebra to spine. Spine is rounded, almost like cat pose on your way up. 
So you're back at this position, this like proud pigeon position. Exhale, waves you down. I'm barely touching with my hands. I'm just keeping myself from like rolling forward. And then I use them to help push me away for the second half of the wave. Inhales to wave down. Sorry, exhale to wave down. Inhale to wave up. And the next time you exhale, belly, chest, head, land here with the head on the stacked fists and hands or the ground itself. Or you might have a pillow or a bolster, a blanket below your head. Somewhere so that your upper body can land and you don't feel like you're in a perpetual push-up. So you don't want to be here. Maybe you have something underneath to catch the body. So we can just melt everything else away and just breathe into that gentle stretch in the right hip, right glute. Breathing in and out through your nose, nice and gentle, smooth breath. Press the ground away. Coming back upright, hands come behind you and the knees drop over to the left. Right to left. So we're in stag pose, like a thunderbolt, or a lightning bolt rather. Hands come to frame the left knee. Inhale, shoulders pull, oh rather, here we are. Left hand on the, uh, on the ground close to the hip. Yes, just got lost in my head, but we're, we're all good, guys. Hands come to frame the right, the left knee. Inhale, your shoulders pull it back, and then exhale, waves you down. Belly, chest, head. Roll up one vertebra at a time. So we're calibrating the speed of your body to the length of your breath. So don't get too hung up on how fast or how slow I'm doing it. And instead, notice how much can you slow your own breath down? Can you deepen your own breath to smooth out this movement? And next time you exhale, belly, chest, head. Allow your head to land on the ground or on hands or on the pillow, on the blanket, so that your upper body can rest, so that everything can be relaxed here. You can really focus on this stretch in the left glute and the left hip. And we'll press your hands into the ground, bring yourself back upright. Knees drop over to the right. Hands come to frame this right knee. And then we'll just turn the hands, so we're coming into a tabletop pose, hands below shoulders, knees below hips. And we'll just turn the hands out and back. So my fingers are facing my knees. Fingers are spread wide, my palms are not going to leave the ground at all. Tuck my toes under for a little more grip, and I just send my hips back slowly to start giving my wrists and forearms a stretch. So I'm pressing into the ground with the whole palm of my hand, with my fingers, and all of that. Moving slowly and intentionally, so we're just giving the wrist a nice deep stretch for building up some strength in the joint, some resiliency in that area of the body. And 
the next time the hips are sent back, we're holding it here in this deep stretch. Just breathing, letting the shoulders be soft, not gritting the teeth, not burning the eyebrows, none of that. Doesn't matter if your hips touch your heels or anything like that. There's like the goal is to just get to the edge of the flexibility in your wrists. It's not for any other body part to reach any anything. If that makes sense. Just got one more deep breath here. the shoulders back up over the wrist, on, twist the hands, the toes stay tucked under, we're going to sit back onto the heels, give the feet a stretch, and then undo that pressure in the wrist, and then come into fingers interlaced for wrist flossing, kind of making like the eternity symbol or figure eight with the wrist here, change directions. Shake off water nice and gentle. Three, two, one. All right. Get this back so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So here we are back in tabletop. Let's step it forward, left, and right. Heel toe the feet out to the edges of the mat. And then here we're going to bend in the knees so deep that the hips come down for our low squat, deep squat rather, and then send the hips up head heavy for a forward fold. So we're going between these two. So once again, we're just like dynamic stretching here. Uh, it doesn't have to be your deepest forward fold or your deepest deep squat. We're just uh, going from one edge to the other to wake the body up to this movement. To wake the legs up really. They've kind of been hanging out. We've mostly been stretching the hips. And opening up areas of the spine. All right, so the next time your hips are high and your head is heavy, you can let your hold yourself here and the breathing continues. These can be a little or a lot bent. Even uh, you want to uh, be at the point where you can let go of the ground if you are holding on to it so that the weight of your head and upper body are being used by gravity to elongate your spine. So if you're feeling tightness or pain in your lower back or your hamstrings, that's the back part of your thighs, bend your knees even more. It doesn't matter how straight your knees are. You can give the head a nod, yes. Give it a shake, no. opposite elbows, creating a frame for your head for ragdoll, and here it's a little free movement. You might up forward and back, give it a sway side to side. Really there's no wrong answers here. Um, you just want to be tuned into your own body and just moving a little bit freely to open up this back side body, all the space in the back side body. Back to center and release the hands down and bend the knees deep. And we're landing in this deep squat. Malasana, deep squat pose. So the hips are super heavy here. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is like the heavier my hips are, the easier it's going to be to bring my shoulders back and bring my head, head over shoulders, like head over heart, heart over hips. So it's like I'm leaning up against a wall behind me. My feet are more or less parallel to one another. They're really like at a 45 degree angle out. I'm not all the way out like a ballerina or frog or anything. They're not perfectly parallel, but if your feet feel comfortable that way, that's great. That's kind of the direction we're headed. So keeping your feet more or less 45 degrees out. My feet land just about mat's distance apart. So short ends, the long ends of the mat, just about that distance, a little bit closer. But depending how tall you are and how long your legs are, 
your feet are going to be a different distance away, but that's kind of a nice place to start and you can adjust accordingly. So it takes a bunch of energy, like even for me, I've been working on this for years, to keep my shoulders up over my hips. So what do we do? We drop the elbows to the inside and then use that as leverage to come up taller. So the elbows come in between the, the knees and we let the knees kind of knock forward how they naturally want to and then they, we open them up. So my hands come up towards my face and then down towards my heart. Pressing the knees open, letting them relax a bit. Open, relax a bit. Three, two, one. What did you drop? Come here. Did you guys hear that? I don't know what fell in the other room. But Lucy just came running over here. I'm not too worried. It didn't sound like anything broke, it just sounded like a bunch of books got knocked over. Probably from this tail. Alright, so here we are in this deep spot. I'm going to be coming to my hands down to about heart center. Elbows open, knees open. Oh my god, oh, just what I needed. Just what I needed, somebody pressed up against me. Alright, deep breath in here. Exhale, look over the right shoulder. Inhale up through center, or back through center, and exhale over to the left. Back through center, on the exhale, release the, you can release the hands and the knees from, uh, elbows from the knees, and come into your forward fold. So let your hips come up real light, head come down heavy. Are in this forward fold, you feel comforted, do you feel better about being afraid? And here we'll heel toe the feet out, 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 about one leg's distance. So imagine you might already have this distance in your head, but this is kind of like the cheat sheet to like figure it out. Is you come down to a deep spot on one side, and it's like okay, this is one leg's distance from one another. You don't have to come down like that. You can kind of just like estimate where one leg's distance is from one another. And now my feet are parallel, no matter what, to one another. I'm pressing into the pinky side edges of the feet. I'm gonna come up, up to uh, tented fingers. Prasarita Padasanasana, standing for or wide-legged forward fold. But first, let's bring the right hand right in front of your face, on the ground, or you might be on a block or a um, stack of books here. Left arm sweeps open. Let the hips go with it. So I let my right hip drop down, left hip pop up to open up the arm here. To make sure, make sure I get a spinal twist, I'm bringing my chest up with it. Mindful that this isn't messing with your right knee at all. And the hand comes down and just sweep the uh, uh, open to the other side. So connecting breath with movement. Inhale as the left arm opens. Exhale as the hand touches down. Inhale as this arm opens. And exhale as it touches down. Then just like a halfway lift in center on tented fingertips, just lengthening uh, my back. I'll exhale to the forward fold. So I'll let my head and shoulders come down heavy, pressing into the pinky side edges of my feet. Maybe my hands reach out for calves, ankles, or even outsides of the feet. And with that grip, I'm bending in my elbows to help pull my chest towards between my legs. Hips heavy, rather hips light, head heavy. I let the weight lean towards my toes without lifting the heel. Release the 
grip on the legs, walk the hands back underneath the shoulders. I'm gonna squeeze my legs in towards one another like I'm trying to scrunch the mat together to come all the way upright. the short end of the mat, left toes are still facing the long end of the mat, bend in this right knee for your warrior two. So my hips and my chest are still open to this long side of the mat. Inhale, reverse, right arm reaches up and back. And then exhale, extended side angle, release this forearm onto the thigh. And the left arm reaches up overhead. So I'm pressing through the pinky side edge of my left foot. Option here to extend the left arm, the right arm straight. So I'm pressing my elbow into this knee, and the left arm can reach up overhead. So I'm creating this nice long line of energy from uh, pinky side edge of the foot to the fingertips. Full breath here. Out. Inhale brings it back up through warrior two. Extend the right leg straight. Toes face the long side of the mat. Left toes turn to face back side of the mat. Bend in the left knee, bringing the knee over the ankle for your Rajasana two warrior two. Inhale reverse warrior. Left arm sweeps up and back. Side bend. Exhale, extended side angle. Forearm comes to land down on the thigh. Left arm reaches up towards the sky. Or right arm reaches up towards the sky, rather. Mm -hmm. Option here to extend this left arm straight, pressing the elbow into the knee. And maybe that right arm reaches up overhead to create this nice long line of energy from pinky side edge of the foot through fingertips. Breathing in this extended side angle pose. Back up through warrior two, extend that leg straight, and then bring both heels in. You might need to bring spacing a little bit in too. And bend the knees for goddess pose. So I'm bringing the knees over the ankles, bending my arms at 90 degrees as well. Deep breath here, and out. Release the hands onto the thighs. And then I'm just like leaning forward a bit. So I'm pressing into the insides of my knees. So a lot of the weight that my thighs, my hips were just holding, I'm bringing down into the pressure in my hands. Thumbs face down and in. So I'm gonna drop one shoulder down. That should give, uh, let's see, so the right shoulder is dropping down, left shoulder is pulling up. Do a real deep stretch here using the tension um, brought in by the arms. Back up through center, and exhale over to the uh, right, dropping the left shoulder down, popping the right shoulder up. So when we're dealing with like any sorts of like cramps and whatnot, and like lower, uh, like in the belly, in the abdomen, um, opening up the hips, the hips often get really tight, and um, that is just adding to that whole space there. So we want to think back bends and hip openers. And, uh, and then we'll end, of course, with some lower back twists. Um, and that's going to all help alleviate the tension and pressure in that area of the body. So we're back through center, then shoulders come up over the hips for Devyasana, our goddess pose. Full breath here. Bring it up, right? Whew. Feet come in. To standing. We'll bring the right knee open to the side, so just swiveling the 
this knee open like a cabinet door. Open it. Slide on the toes. Maybe the uh, heel's pressing into above this ankle. Or option to bring the foot up to the calf. Or even the inner thigh for our Vrkshasana tree pose. So if you can get the leg up here, but you can't quite figure out how to keep the foot from sliding down, press the hips forward while pressing this right knee back. So I'm pressing this knee back towards the wall behind me. It's not touching, obviously, but like that's the direction. While well, my hips press forward. So this counter action uh, resistance helps hold in place. This is a squeeze between the foot and the leg. And that's whether the foot is on the inner thigh or the calf muscle as well. You don't want the foot to land on the knee, it's just not good for the ligaments of the knee. Um, that joint doesn't want to bend that way. So just keep it where it's meant to be, huh? Hands can come to heart center or whatever other expression of this tree pose feels right to you. And we'll release that foot down to the mat. Let the weight shift into this right leg. The left knee opens out to the side. It's just like a cabinet door opening on a hinge. Drag the foot in. So the foot's on the ankle or the calf. Or I might reach up to the inner thigh. Sometimes I can feel like a really bit, uh, scary step. Like from ankle to calf is one thing, but from calf to inner thigh, it can feel like a bigger step because it's a farther distance. But once you've got the openness, the availability, the mobility availability in the hip, it's really just a mind game. Because as you press your hips forward and the knee presses back, the tension is really what's holding you in place. And then it's just whatever's in your mind that's telling you that this bottom leg can't support the weight, but it already has been if your foot's been on your calf. So stability is not given to us. Like our entire lives, we've been fighting for it, are working towards it. Maybe fighting is like a negative way of saying it, but kind of. Like even when we're born, we're not guaranteed stability. We have to work for it. As like babies, you work towards being able to even stabilize your head enough to like, build up those muscles to like look at something without just being floppy. You need to struggle to learn to walk. All right, so I know but none of us were given stability. None of us uh, didn't have to work for it, whether you remember it or not. So you always this cool opportunity to kind of fight for more stability and more positions and more, you know, um, work towards building up strength for more options of shapes to be in shapes to be stable in. So take that as you may. We're going to release that leg down to the ground. And let's just shake it out. Shake out your legs. Shake out your arms. We're going to like shake the whole body for our lymphatic shape. So whole body comes into a shape. Shoulders rise and drop, rise and drop. So just bringing a little hop to it. But if hopping is not your jam, you want to lift your heels and let them slam down with bent knees to create this like reverberation. Or you can bring a full hop. I like bringing my shoulders up towards my ears and letting them drop down. Cause I know that I carry a lot of tension, a lot of like unnecessary tension in my upper back and my neck. So I just like letting my shoulders drop and you just kind of get to use this technique to release a lot of that you know, stress or um, build up in my neck and shoulders. Let my arms just like flop around. And if you've got the energy, you can totally take up space. You can bring like full hops into this, <laughs> whatever you're kind of feeling like. Today, lymphatic shaking, it's all about moving the energy around in the body to relieve stress and tension. but also the fluids within the body, like physically, not just like metaphorically or spiritually, like physically. It's like you're 
body's a protein shaker, you know, and then it has a little metal thing inside, and you're like, gotta shake it so that all like the crusty powdery bits get integrated into the oat milk or whatever. <laughs> Whatever you kids are drinking these days, <laughs> you know, so it's integrated into the whole thing. So your body, same idea. We get these parts of our bodies that get stuck, or almost like a dam gets built in the blood and the lymph and the endocrine system. So here, we just kind of get to kind of shake, shake it loose, like twigs accumulating in a stream. It doesn't take that much to clear it away, have a clear flow of water again, but left unattended, these blockages build up more and more severely. All right, so you're just shaking for a couple more breaths. Three, two, one. All right. Now we have our breath of joy. So this is our practicing, our practice of release, our exercise of release. So now the pranayam breathing technique, and it's four parts. Three inhalations through the nose, consecutive with no breaks. And a big ha out through the mouth with noise, like yelling it out. The body looks like this. On the inhale, arms sweep forward. Next inhale, arms sweep out. Final inhale, arms sweep forward. And a big ha, arms throw back. So we don't want to arch the spine on the inhales, but we do want to throw the arms back on the exhale. Yeah, we got about 10 of those. It looks like this. Make sure you're not going to hit the wall. Full space. In. 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 Ha! In, 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 ha, in, 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 ha, in, 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 ha. If you haven't joined in yet, now's your chance. Ha! Ha! Last one, make it count. Ha! Ha! One hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. Feet come nice and wide, stable stance. Eyes can close. Just take a moment here to arrive and observe. We'll observe what was created. A rise in heart rate, perhaps a rise in body temperature, but what else is created? And you give yourself space to take up room to be loud, to shake and wiggle unabashedly. Or what shows up as resistance to stop you from fully participating? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. And gently blink your eyes open. You might grab a sip of water or towel off any sweat if that builds up for you. All right. 
If you're already on the ground, you just stay there. We'll meet you. If not, you can come down with me. Meeting at the back of your mat, big toes come to touch. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift, hands on shins. And exhale, knees bend deep, deep, so deep. Then you come to seated, hands walk back with you. Okay. Feet come together, knees splay open. Give the feet a little bit of a massage. I always do it kind of almost like I'm opening up pages of a book. And it just gives my hips kind of a moment to kind of relax and get the message that it's all right. Well, we've done quite a bit of hip opening, so maybe they're already like not panicking. But often I get feedback from people or like even like in my own body feedback from myself where my hips don't want to rush into an opening stretch. They kind of need to be like eased into it. So we give the feet a nice grab or the ankles, get nice and tall, deep breath in. And exhaling, we release belly, chest, head, just like before. You might use your elbows to press into the knees. Even though I'm pressing my knees towards the ground, my goal isn't to hit the ground. My goal is just to get to the edge of that stretch in my hips. I'm breathing fully here. Sandra Bermuda says, have you heard of osmosis? Very tiger, I like to observe these classes and not participate, but try to get the benefit through observing and osmosis. I have heard of, yeah, totally. I mean, I have heard of osmosis in like biology class, but also I think a lot of people do that. There's quite a few people who watch me while they're at work. <laughs> so I'm glad to help in any way I can. And I think a few of you guys do like, um, at least get a few more deep breaths in, you know? I think the meditation and the breath work are as important as the movement. And I mean, I think the movement is as important as the breath work and the meditation as well, but at different points in our lives, different aspects are gonna become more available or more, I don't know, important, maybe that's not the best word to use um, to us. So whatever's serving you, I appreciate, I appreciate you here. Either way, your presence brings some energy to the practice. So just got one more deep breath here. Bring it back up. Right. And who knows, maybe the next time you have the lunge in your real life, you'll remember. Knee over ankle. <laughs> yeah, I would have to brush up on osmosis. It's like transferring. Yes, I do breath work and meditation. Beautiful. Uh, so let's let the knees come together. I actually want to come down onto um, our bellies real quick. Not real quick. Mindfully. But we're just here for a little bit. So I just want to give a little bit more of a belly stretch. So hands, or rather elbows, come below the shoulders. Top to the feet, press into the ground real strong, like so much so that the knees lift. And I'm gonna press my glute, my squeeze my glutes together, press my hips into the ground. And it's almost like I'm trying to drag myself forward. I'm bringing, I'm pressing my forearms down and back to bring my chest forward. It's called Sphinx Pose. So where I want you to feel the stretch is on your abdominal muscles. So that your whole belly should be feeling stretched here. And if it's not, press the hips into the ground even harder. Press the chest forward even stronger. You do that by pressing the elbows down and back. And then breathing fully here. Deep breath. Nice. And then we'll bend in the knees. 
Send the hips up and back. Big toes come to touch. Knees come out nice and wide towards the edges of the mat. And sink the hips down towards the heels. I can only sound the ground for a child's pose. The arms, just for a moment, press strong to the ground so the elbows stay lifted. Deep breath in. And exhale, let it go. Just let the shoulders relax, let the arms relax. The head can get, be a little rock side to side, a little forehead massage. Or just come upright, drop the hips over to one side. I try to do the bits I can do in my chair, but I'm at work and can catch the so I can't catch the entire stream of the Tommy Starts in the morning. Totally, yes, I know Greg, you're one of my you're one of my chair yogis and work yogis. So you, you cover a couple of those <laughs> of those uh, categories. Just hug the knees in and give it a gentle roll back. So when I roll back like this, obviously mindful if you have like scoliosis or something going on with your spine, um, or if you just had lower back surgery, maybe you don't do that at all, but you know it's good for your body. But even if you're like, got not, like no contraindications and your spine is really healthy and all that jazz, um, I still roll down, down one side, right? Like I'm like bony. I'm not rolling down on my spine, I'm rolling down the left or the right side. It's called your erector spinae, those muscles. To get a little bit of a little muscle, like a little massage. Um, and also you're not rolling right on your bones, which is super not, not comfortable. So here we got this hug in from the knees, the lower back massage, using the weight of your hips. Let the feet touch down to the ground, close to the hips. Yeah, I think um, I think Twitch is like the perfect place to, to kind of like look in on different fitness and movement and mindfulness classes and see like what what kind of like interests you. I definitely lurk, or not even lurk, I'm like in people's chats. I definitely watch a bunch of fitness streams that I'm not participating in because I've already like worked out for the day. All right, here we are with fingertips grazing the heels. I'm gonna tuck my shoulder blades underneath to support my chest. I'm gonna tilt my hips just a bit so I feel my lumbar spine, my lower back. See so your space here? I'm tilting my hips so there's no longer space underneath my lower back. And then rolling up one vertebra at a time for some rolling bridges. Inhaling to rise. And exhale, I lower down top of my spine, middle spine, lower back, hips. Inhaling to rise, hips, lower back middle back, upper back, and lowering in reverse, exhaling to lower. And last round like this. Hug the knees in towards the chest and gently release them over to the right. Right hand lands on top of left knee. Left arm opens up like the letter T and I'm bringing my shoulder down towards the ground. So my left shoulder is trying to touch the ground. Everything else is relaxed. Doesn't matter if my knees touch one another or the ground. And I can look over my left fingertips for a complete spinal twist. Supta Matsudrasana, supine spinal twist. comes back up through center, knees come up through center, and we'll gently release the knees over to the left, sacking right hip over left hip, left hand on top of right knee, 
right arm opens up like the letter T and I'm focusing on bringing the shoulder down towards the ground, even if that means lifting up my right knee a bit. The gaze can be over the right arm, um, but if you have some neck stuff going on, just keep it centered up towards the sky. Don't, no need to strain the neck here for this pose. This is all about a lower back release, lumbar spine. If you have um, lower back pain, sciatica, if you're experiencing belly cramps, menstrual cramps, like this pose is something you're gonna wanna keep in your repertoire. It doesn't, so we always do it at the end of class just so that we always get to it, but you don't have to really warm up that much for this. You can do this at the end of the day in bed, um, like as you're like getting ready for bed and all of that. It's just like a really nice gentle pose. You don't have to be in the deepest version of it ever. You don't have to be like pulling into the twist or anything like that. You really just want to use breath and gravity to release you into the posture. And then bring the head back up through center, knees back up through center. And just notice, is there any last movement or wiggle or twist that your body's asking for? Uh, as our next exercise together will be Shavasana, final relaxation pose, and that is a bunch of stillness. So if there's any movement left in your body that would satisfy you physically before the end of class, now is the time to take it. All class, we tell our body what to do. Now we ask back, ask back, is there anything left? doesn't have to have a fancy yoga name. It should be literally anything at all. Often when we ask our body what it would like, what it would benefit from, it's not gonna answer in words. Just kind of move around until you find the answer. Just wrapping up whatever this last movement that your body's asking for. Up. Oh. We'll come into our Shavasana, final relaxation pose. Now one last full body stretch. And then releasing the legs down the length of the mat. Feet land at least a foot apart. Legs so relaxed that they naturally splay open to the sides. Shoulders tuck under, supporting the chest. Arms come down to land by the sides of the body. Palms space open, a symbol, a mudra of receptivity. Allow yourself to receive the full benefits of your effort here today. And the gaze is straight up towards the sky. The invitation is for the eyes to close, but if that's uncomfortable for you, just a soft gaze towards the ceiling or spine. If laying flat on your back bothers your lower back at all, brings any pain, bend, deepen the knees, feet come to the outside edges of the mat, knees knock together, lifting the hips, rounding the lower back to bring close to the ground, and then releasing all effort, broken bridge pose. Traditionally, it's with legs down the length of the mat, but you do what works best for your body. I'm going to come up to seated to more easily lead you through this uh, meditation. And to play some uh, Tibetan singing bowls for you. <clears throat> I also enjoy workout late afternoon or evening. I try stretching in the morning, but evening is nice for me. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. What time is it for you where you're at? Because it's like 9.45 here in the morning. So I love starting my day with stretching. I do like seeing some of the moves and incorporate some new ones. 
Yeah, awesome. Good for you. Almost noon? Okay, yeah, so it's like right in the middle of the day. It's definitely a more like awkward time to figure out how to move. I like going for runs in the middle of the day because I love the sun. All right, so Shavasana is all about integration. It's all about integrating all the effort, um, whether it was physical or mental or emotional or spiritual or whatever it may have been during class, um, into the self, into the body, into the uh, mind, into the psyche. Almost like how at the end of the day, sleeping turns your experiences into long-term memories. So Shavasana functions in a yoga class. And we'll start with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. But this time the shoulders stay relaxed. No need to lift and drop them. And allow the breath to continue in and out just through the nose. Inviting your exhalations to become longer and deeper than your inhalations. Space between top and bottom teeth so the jaw hangs heavy. And the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. As all the muscles in the jaw relax. Lips and cheeks relax. Nostrils rest as air gently passes through like waves lapping up to shore. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets. Eyelids just barely touching. And the space between the eyebrows broadens as all the muscles in the forehead relax. The muscles surrounding the ears, all their wrinkles and folds. And deep down into the ear canals. Relax. Back of the head and top of the head, the whole hairline. The whole head rests heavy. Neck and throat release. shoulders melt away. Upper arms and elbows relax. Forearms and wrists rest. Palms, backs of the hands, knuckles, Fingers, fingertips, whole hands alive with vibration, 
whole hands alive with creative potential. Rest and integrate all that you practice. Upper back, middle and lower back. Rest heavy, supported by the ground below. Like lead sinking into hot sand. Chest and belly naturally rise and fall with the breath. Pelvis, glutes, hips, rest heavy, grounded. Thighs and knees melt away. Shins and calves relax. Ankles, heels, arches of the feet, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet, and all of the toes relax. Both feet and the legs relax. Top half of the body rests, and lower half of the body. The left side, and right side. Back side. Front side. Whole body rests. Whole body rests. Whole body rests. Notice if in your mind, if even for just one moment, there was silence in that inner dialogue. Notice if in your breath, there's ease. In your body, the places of tension have found space. And the places of restlessness have found peace. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. Know that in yoga, practice makes practice, nothing more and nothing less.
and invite your inhalations to deepen and become longer than your exhalations. As fingers begin to wiggle and toes begin to curl. And that feeling of heaviness replaced with a feeling of lightness and expansion. This head begins to turn side to side. And arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. Let the knees bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural landing in a fetal position, fully released and fully supported by the ground below you. You can use that bottom arm as a pillow and bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today. And if that intention inspires you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. With eyes still closed or gently lowered, press your hands into the ground to come up to a seated position, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together, Nanjali Mudra. Today we worked on a series of hip opening and uh, lower back um, and abdomen stretching, cramps relieving postures. The first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to the community that held this space. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined me today. I hope you found something that serves you. Namaste, Bodhi. Thank you, I feel a bit better. Good, I'm glad. Um, yeah, definitely take it easy, but yeah, those like lower back twists, um, anything that you're like squeezing your knees in towards your chest is gonna be good. It's gonna feel nicer on the release. It's nice to share fitness journeys. I usually walk up to about two miles. Nice, how many miles up? Namaste, Sancho Bermuda. Um, how many miles do I run? It, de it depends. Um, I try to go on one long run, long run a week, um, and that's about five miles. And then, like, regularly, I usually run like 5K, like between two, so between two to three and a half miles throughout the week. Um, but yeah, I try to fit them in where fit it in where I can. Like if I have lots of energy one week, then um, I'll probably do, instead of doing long runs, I'll do shorter runs, like just a, like one and a half to two miles. And But I'll try to do speed runs, so I'll try to do intervals. So I'll go like really, really fast and then like walk for 30 seconds and then run as fast as I can and then, you know, interval training kind of stuff. Versus when I'm kind of like, medium or like low energy then I just try to make it to 5k and I, don't, and I just don't stop I just don't let myself stop it doesn't matter how slow I go so then with my long runs I'm just like I have a number in my head or like I have a destination in my head I'm like it doesn't matter how tired I am I'm gonna keep moving like no matter what no walking no stopping so I do lots of different runs but yeah the most I've ever run is eight crazy. It was back in September. <laughs> and I've never run that much ever again. If I want to, I want to work my way back up. But that's like, I was like, wow, I can't believe I ran eight like effing miles. <laughs> but yeah. Um, do you walk up to two miles like throughout your day? It kind of like accumulates or do you like go for a two mile walk out of curiosity? And do you have a dog? You met Lucy before, right? She's out on the patio, so she's getting some sunshine. The sun came out. I've walked 15 miles in one day. Woo, that sounds like a hike. Good for you. 
I don't know the farthest I've ever walked in one day. I do a good bit of walking, but but mostly because I don't I don't have a car. Like a lot of my life, most of my life, I didn't have a car. So it's like it's not like oh I have to go exercise. It's like oh I have to go to the grocery store. Oh or like oh I I want to go. You don't know what I'm saying. You have to walk two miles at a time. Yes, I like your dog. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know if you had a dog, and that's why you got, I got to go on walks. She is the perfect excuse to go on walks with. I love going. I love spending time with Lucy, my baby. Oh, yeah, I can see her. She's literally, like, outside right now. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me, everyone, today. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, like tomorrow, I'm, it's weird because like tomorrow, I'm, I don't know, I've been teaching like every day until like last week when it was my birthday and I kind of burnt out, but um, I got invited to a friend's, to a friend's fitness class and I'm like, oh, and it's at 9 a.m. my time and I always teach from like 8.30 a.m. till 10 a.m. So I'm like, I was, I haven't been able to go like all year and I'm just like, oh, I can actually like go no big deal like I can just show up to your class not in real life but it's through zoom like I won't be or like on um on twitch it's virtual I won't be able to actually go but I don't have pets not allowed in my apartment I also had no car 18 to age 18 to 25 all buses bikes taxis and walking yeah same all for me it's like all yeah like uber I think there's a lot of uber but um or buses I don't mind taking the bus like everyone really hates public transportation I think they're just not used to it, but, like, I don't hate it. I mean, I've seen some crazy shit go down in public transportation. I've been, like, robbed, been, like, assaulted, all sorts of stuff, but I still don't hate it. Like, I'm like, you know what? It's a roll of the dice. If you, like, take public transportation as much as me, it's cool. <laughs> like, crazy shit's gonna happen. I've lived in, like, so many states. Emmanuel's, hello! I tried yoga for the first time yesterday. <gasps> wow! Oh, uh, where? What class? Um, what's it called? Was it in person? What was it like? What type of yoga? Exciting. Um, so curious about your experience. I just did it by myself. Hey, all right. How, like, what was your, uh, what's it called? Did you like it? Did you feel like I watched a YouTube video? Cool, cool. How do you feel today after after your first yoga class yesterday? I know Matt, so I use the carpet. You know my feelings about that. As long as you have something cushiony below you, you're good. I mean, it's gonna be a little harder to grip, but it's okay. Just because something's a little bit harder doesn't mean it's bad. As long as you're not like in tabletop on like a tile floor, then I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Your poor knees. The great kind. Hello. Oh, so many friends are hopping in. Experimented with socks and barefoot, and I like barefoot better. Yeah, socks, okay. Lots of people, so not lots of, like, adults, but a lot of high school kids when they used to teach at the public schools would come in where they didn't want to take their socks off during class, and I was like, you guys, like, you're not, you're going to be slipping and sliding all over the place. You're like, oh, whatever, who cares? And I'm like, no, really, like, it's going to be way more frustrating for you um, to be trying to, to be trying to practice uh, when you're slipping and sliding all over the place. Barefoot is totally my vibe. Yeah, same, same, like, for the rest of my life, too, but especially in yoga. Um, or uh, some, I'd have, like, adults, this was, like, in, this was, like, back back in the day, back in my day, um, like before yoga was as popular, and adults would come in and they would want to wear shoes, like they'd want to wear like running shoes or like athletic shoes to class, and they're like, oh, now I'm not slipping, and I'm like, no, like, yeah, but the whole idea of like yoga is that you get to like build up the muscles in your feet, and you don't get to do that in shoes, and this was not a conversation that people were having. 15 years ago, um, or most people weren't having, um, so that was like a big struggle, and we're like, all right, well, if nothing else, you're not allowed to wear shoes on the mats from the studio, because 
people put their, you put your face right where your shoes were and you just walked in from the outside world. Like there's so many reasons not to wear shoes on your yoga mat. You did 25 minutes of it. Hey, 10 minutes of standing, 10 minutes of fast yoga, five minutes of ground yoga. I'm not a big fan of sitting on the floor. I love upward dog and child's pose though. Okay, uh, standing yoga is my least favorite. <laughs> it means I should do it more. I struggle with balance. Yes, we talk about um, struggle and, and frustration a lot in class. Um, that, sounds, that sounds so great, Emmanuel. Good for you, uh, even though it's not you're not a fan of it. Good for you for getting down on the floor anyway. Um, fast yoga. I'm like wondering what that, like is that like vinyasa? Was it like flowy? Like you're going, do you mean like you're going like pose, pose, pose kind of thing? I'm curious, I'm curious. Um, oh, thank you, Bodhi. Thank you, my friend. Um, yes, yes, yes. Tips are super appreciated. You do get a recording of class with timestamps. So you get to all your favorite parts of class. The beginning meditation, the shavasana at the end, the breathing techniques, the lymphatic shaking, um, all of that. So you can just skip to your favorite parts of class. Super appreciated. Um, I need to fix that. No worries. Um, you're super helpful. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, standing yoga is my least favorite. I struggle with balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, you already know the great kind. You're like super good with all the science and like behind it, the psychology behind it. But whatever we're resisting, like whatever we resist persists. So if we're resisting balance, like that's what's gonna like it's not gonna get any better until we like face it. Um and it's just fun. I feel like yoga is like a fun place to practice balance because it's like you're we're all making funny shapes with our bodies and like falling out of it and like breathing loudly and stuff. So it's like no pressure. Like you don't have to look any type of way. There's like no measure there's no real measure of success except our own personal. It's not even about feeling personally successful. It's just about observing and noticing where we're at. Um, which can be difficult not to. Like when you do like finally get like, oh I just like held that tree pose the whole time or whatever, or, like for three breaths. I just like held dancer pose for three breaths or ten breaths or whatever it is. It's like it's not about being like, oh no, I shouldn't feel accomplished. Like of course you're going to, but it's like not even about that. It's just about noticing where you're at by fast yoga I meant like no pauses in between poses and just a fast flow got it thanks for explaining Emmanuel's yeah for sure like um I definitely I love pauses and poses I think they, it makes the people think the faster you go the harder it is but I think holding poses <clears throat> can be more difficult um or I know I know that it can be so that's what I hope I Hold you guys in poses so long because I know it's challenging but it helps build these stabilization muscles that we're talking about it helps build the muscle memory of what correct alignment is um and also I can't see you guys so it's different like in a studio it's one thing for me to be like next 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 but here it's like oh I want I don't know everyone to have a moment to like not catch up but like go at their own pace and not be like six poses behind I love that. What you resist persists. Yeah, that's definitely a, a yoga ism that got passed down to me through through the grapevine. So I can't take quote credit for it. One of my teachers said it. You got to deal with that ish. <laughs> tree pose is difficult for me. Most difficult tree. Yeah, that's why we go back to it again and again and again. Guys, you know what I, you know what you know what I say. Like, there's always moments for tree pose throughout our day. So, like when I was first learning, first learning yoga, like first uh, learning yoga, and I loved it so much, and I freaking hated the balancing part of class. Like, I would complain. Like, side note, I was 14 in an adult class. Like. All the women were middle-aged women, like their kids were all older than me. I was the only one in my age there and I was very respectful and all of that. They were really nice to me and all of that. But when balancing came up, she'd be like, for Shasana, I was like, oh, come on. It looked super important. Like, nobody would do that. But this was like 2004, you know, so like, and 2004, 2005. Uh, so like yoga etiquette wasn't like a thing yet, really. Like not wide, not mainstream. 
and she was like, well, the more, like, the more you complain about it, the more I, I'm, like, encouraged to know that, like, this is exactly the pose you should be practicing. So I, what's it called? I started practicing tree pose everywhere. So I'd be, like, in school when I was, like, waiting on the cafeteria line or waiting on the line at the grocery store or just standing. Like, I would just, every time I was standing, I was, I was like this. Like, for years, guys. <laughs> like, I was always on one leg. Like, people used to make fun of me that I was, like, a, a flamingo or, like, a, what's it called? A stork? No, it's a flamingo that does one leg. Like, that was me all the time. And, like, now I think about me. Hold tons of crazy balance poses. But it was because I was like, I hate this pose. I hate this pose. She was like, you keep saying that you hate it, and it's not going to make you hate it less. It's literally, like, you're not going to get better at it just doing that. And it didn't. Uh, what's it called? And she was right. I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna complain about this the whole time and I'm not getting any better. So I just started practicing all the time. The most relaxing pose was child's. Oh, yeah, love child's pose. I, I do that pose every single morning. When my, like, my little watch goes off in the morning, I turn it off, and then I just stretch out into a child's pose right in bed. Like, I'm still under the covers. I haven't even opened my eyes yet. Love it. Love child's pose most difficult tree true true um or um, like true for most people uh which do you like more studio teaching or teaching on twitch i like studio teaching more i'll just be honest but i am really grateful that teaching on twitch is a thing but i loved teaching in studios i taught in studios for years i love being face to face with people and being able to see people um uh, like have whatever playlist going, not worrying about like DMCA strikes or nothing like that. And I'm, re I'm a very hands-on teacher. I'm a very hands-on teacher. So like I would, you know, if someone's in child's pose, like come over and give you like a lower back, like lower back release. Um, so yeah, I like was mentored and trained by, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, massage, uh, massage therapist and all, all of that. I'm not a massage therapist. But I was mentored and luckily got to work under under people who are skilled in body work. So give lots of massages and shoulder massages and like tension headache releases. And also I could just like adjust people to make sure they were in the correct alignment and like see where the class was at. So instead of like everyday teaching a beginner's class or everyday teaching a advanced class, I just like see who showed up and be like, all right. I know exactly like what we're gonna do today according to like where everyone's ability level is instead of just kind of guessing or on Twitch I'm like I'm gonna make it all levels because I don't like really know where everyone's at or people might think they're doing the poses but they're not and I'm always like worried that someone's gonna injure themselves because I can't see and be like oh wait that's not the way do it this way instead kind of thing but there's no way I would be able to meet all of you guys and a lot of the people who come on to stream to practice are people who used to come to my studio classes and obviously can't because I live in California now and they all live on the East Coast. Uh, the most enjoyable was downward dog tied with warrior pose. Yeah, okay, you like those strength poses. Good for you, Emmanuels. Uh, that's dope. Uh, what's it called? Lots of people I hate downward facing dog at first. I kind of always liked it. But the backs of my legs have never been like super, super tight. They've been tight, but like not crazy, crazy tight. And I think that's why a lot of people uh, or like sh shoulder tightness um, don't enjoy it. So good for you. When I was first doing tree pose, I had socks on. I kept slipping. Mm -hmm. Tell you, socks are the culprit. Socks are the culprit. <laughs> the great kind. Glad I got to stop by and say hello. Enjoy the rest of your week. Oh, thank you, the great kind. I'm really glad. Uh, it's awesome to see you. Uh, in chat and in class. Um, I did put up one of my VODs. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, so you can actually check out the earlier part of class. And uh, I think it was yesterday's. And today's might actually like be saved as a VOD too. So I gotta like figure that out. So you can actually see, um, what's it called? You can actually see like the meditation and the actual movement part of class. Hi Lucy. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to get my heel to touch the floor in downward facing dog, but the journey persists. 
as it does. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's no rush when it comes to heels touching the floor and downward facing dog. Like some of, sometimes it's like a structural bo uh, bone thing. It's not a muscle thing. Like if your ankles, like Patrick's ankles, the bone actually is what's stopping him. Um, not even the tightness in his calf or anything like that. And then the next thing to get through is the tent, like your Achilles tendon. Like that's not something that you're, you want to be like snapping around or like extremely stretching or anything like that. Um, but I think that, yeah, everyone, everyone's like fullest expression of the pose of whatever pose is going to look different from one another's. Um, that's dope too, you know? Yeah, my heel can't touch the floor yet in downward facing dog. Totally. The interest, so one of the things is too, um, so part of it, part of downward dog is the back of the leg thing, right? So like this, this has to be like really open. However, it's like the hip situation is also like your shoulder, people like underestimate like how much your shoulders need to be open for this alignment to be happening. So if you're here, it's gonna be harder for your heels to come down. But so many downward dogs in our future, guys. No, no rush to get anywhere, anywhere <laughs> before the